What's going on guys, JP back at you once again, bring you guys a DVD slash Blu-ray slash 4K update, and I gotta say, this is a pretty nice update, I'm really happy with a lot of the stuff I picked up. In fact, this is probably my biggest 4K update ever, I mean, I have more 4Ks than DVDs, uh, not than Blu-rays, but I, I got a lot of 4Ks this time, so I thought that was really cool, can't wait to show off some of the stuff that I picked up. And yeah, with that said, let's jump right into it. As always, we're going to start with the DVDs. And the first thing that I picked up, uh, a couple of uh, Nickelodeon things. So I saw this at Walmart and I was like, man, why the hell not? And that is the Wild Thornberries, the complete series. Uh, this was not my favorite of the 90s Nicktoon era, but I did enjoy me some Wild Thornberries. Uh, it also has a little bit of a horror connection. I believe the sister of Debbie is played by Danielle Harris of Halloween fame, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, but yeah, the Wild Thornberry is a pretty fun show um, about a little girl who can talk to animals and stuff like that. Uh, really, 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 really good Nickelodeon show. Not my favorite, um, not even in my top five, but you know, it was always one that I did check out often. Uh, there's 91 episodes. Surprises me that they didn't just make nine more uh, to get to 100. Um, but yeah, it's a nice little box. I think it was like 20 bucks, so I thought it was very fair priced. Not sure when I'll ever crack that thing open, but <laughs> uh, I, I bought it. After that, we have another Nickelodeon thing here, and that is Are You Afraid of the Dark? Curse of the Shadows. You know what? Um, I actually plan on watching this during the Halloween season, but totally just forgot that I picked it up. So maybe I'll save it for next Halloween. Uh, but as we know, they rebooted Are You Afraid of the Dark with a TV movie, and this one seems to be more of a limited series. Uh, there is uh, six tales, um, so I guess it might be going back towards like the old style. I don't know if it's one uh, overarching narrative or it's a bunch of different stories. But during this past Halloween season, I actually watched some of the original run of Are You Afraid of the Dark? I think I watched like the first two seasons. And man, that show still holds up. I mean, there's there's a couple of duds in there, but there are really solid episodes. And um, I just I just love that show so much. And uh, I'm happy that it returned in some form, but I haven't watched this yet. I'll eventually check it out. After that, I picked up a couple of boots at a convention. Uh, normally not a big uh, bootleg collector, um, but I'll grab some stuff that's not in print or never had a release. Specifically looking for stuff that never had a release. Just for convenience. I know like YouTube and other places have this stuff, but like if I want to check out, for example, Hunter's Blood, I could pop in this bootleg until it gets a release, that is. Uh, but yeah, this is sort of um, one of those uh, post-deliverance... Um, exploitation films. I have seen this flick before. It came out in 1986, I believe. I think it's pretty solid. When I watched it, I watched it on like a VHS transfer. Not sure how this bootleg transfer will be, but figured I would give it a shot um, because I do like the movie. Um, and then after that, we have uh, another bootleg here, and that is Grim Prairie Tales, which is another title that I've been wanting to check out for a really long time. I think it's sort of a anthology film, uh, a western anthology film, and to me that always was appealing, and it also has James Earl Jones and Brad Dourif in it, so I thought that was pretty cool, but yeah, I've never checked it out, but one day I will get to that. Uh, here's one that I had to pick up because it, honestly I'm just kind of curious on it, and that is Ilsa Tigress of Siberia. Uh, this is part of the Ilsa film series. So there was originally Ilsa She-Wolf of the SS, uh, Ilsa Harem Keeper of the Oil Sheiks, and then um, there was The Wicked Warden, which was technically not an Ilsa film, but then later like changed to one. But this, I guess, is like the official third one, kind of. Uh, Ilsa the Tigress of Siberia. Uh, I've never seen it, but of course it stars... Um, Diane Thorne as Ilsa. Pretty curious to check that out. Uh, I guess this one is probably more like Soviet. Um, but yeah, this is uh, hmm, 
uh, I'm, I'm curious to see how the transfer <laughs> looks on this, but I would love to see like the Ilsa films get another release. Um, after that, we have Beaks the movie. I mean, I just could not not pick it up because I, I remember Moods picked up a VHS of this a long time ago, and ever since then I wanted to see it. I'm sure it's just like a bird's rip off, but yeah. <laughs> Beaks. Um, here we go with one that uh, I was very curious about because it looks to be some sort of like war horror film and I've always wanted to check this one out. I've known of it for a while. It's an AIP release. Um, it is a World War II film, I believe, and it is Lost Platoon. Um, maybe some sort of vampire flick uh, based on the, the title there, but and oh, well, obviously there's a big giant vampire on the front, so yeah. Uh, pretty curious to check this one out, man. I mean, I've never really heard anybody talk about this film. And uh, I think it's from the 90s. So, curious to check that out. Um, or wait. Is it Vietnam? Huh. It says... Well, they have Vietnam air gun, uh, weapons on the cover, so maybe it is Vietnam. But it, said World, it said Germany, World War II. So maybe it starts out in World War II. I don't know, but uh, that's one that I'm very curious on. Uh, after that, we have um, Paper House, and I never would have picked this up if it wasn't for the Horror Man here on YouTube. Uh, he was going through his uh, Fangoria's 100 uh, Greatest Horror Films You've Never Seen. Got some like fuzz on there. And um, this was one of the titles, and he really enjoyed it, so it made me want to check it out. Uh, and I seen this and I was like, oh, this is like perfect type of bootleg to get because I think this only has like a Region 2 release. Um, but yeah, check that out eventually. I think it's sort of psychological, but shout out to the Horror Man, always coming through with some interesting recommendations. Uh, after that, I got a manufacturer on demand. We were doing the um, 1970 show. So I picked up this for 1970, and that is... Joan Crawford in Trog. Um, this movie is absolutely ridiculous. Actually, I think this this just got a Blu-ray release from Screen Factory. Like, uh, I think it got announced like right after I picked it up, which is annoying. But um, yeah, this is uh, this is a this is it's trash, but it's fun trash, as Dave would say. Um, but yeah, good stuff with Trog. Uh, after that, we have uh, Clarice season one. Uh, back when we did the Hannibal show on 22 Shots, I checked out the Hannibal TV series, and I actually really liked it. I think I did the first two seasons, um, or the first season, I can't remember. Um, but Clarice uh, is like the newest show uh, in the um, Hannibal Lecter saga. Um, so yeah, this is like the, I guess, Silence of the Lambs tale, or is it like, is it a redo of like Silence of the Lambs, or is it like a sequel show? I don't know, I'll have to check it out. But that is Clarice. Um, and then we have a Dollar General pickup, uh, Sharknado 3, Oh Hell No. I've actually never seen any of the Sharknado films, but I own the first two, so I figured, um, I told myself if I ever see three, four, five, I don't know how many there are, but if I ever see them for like under three bucks, which this one barely cut it, I'd pick them up. And maybe I'll watch them during a Shark Week one year, but yeah, that is Sharknado. All right, and then we have uh, this film. I actually started watching this a few years ago. Uh, I had a screener, but I, I never uh, ended up finishing it. Um, this is the a Darren Lynn Bowsman film, and it is uh, Saint Agatha. So, yeah, uh, I don't remember being too interested in it when I saw it, but this was a dollar at the Dollar Tree, so I figured, why the hell not? Um, and then, actually, I think this is the last DVD. So the last DVD here... Um, we have Abominable. So, hey, I mean, it's a dollar at the Dollar Tree. It's a Bigfoot slash Abominable Snowman type movie. Um, probably trash, but I figured I would check it out. So that is it for the DVDs. Um, I don't buy a lot anymore. I really don't. Um, mostly stuff that isn't available on Blu-ray. And that's about it. Like, <laughs> it's funny... I was um, watching, I watched Ghostbusters on 4K the other day because I want to go see the new Ghostbusters movie and I haven't watched those in a really long time so I figured, hey, you know, I'll check them out, watch Ghostbusters on 4K. Thought I had Ghostbusters 2 on Blu-ray, but in fact I only had it on DVD. 
So I went from 4K to DVD, and I was like thinking like, what man, I haven't really popped in a DVD in quite a while since I think uh, probably that Trog DVD there, uh, which was months ago. So uh, I popped it in, and I was like, ew, you know what I mean? And it, it's not that bad, but it's just like when you get used to these like great transfers, going back to DVD is rough. So I don't really buy a lot of DVD anymore. So moving on here to the Blu-rays. Uh, first up, I rejoined the Disney Movie Club for the, I think, like, fourth time, maybe. So I got my starting package or whatever, still building um, a collection for my niece. But I also check out a lot of them, too. So uh, first up here, we have Escape to Witch Mountain. Um, this was one of the Disney exclusives. I've actually seen this film when I was a kid, but I really don't know anything about it. I don't remember it at all, so I figured it would be a cool one to revisit one day. Um, and then this one, I this was like my favorite movie growing up as like a really little kid. Like I'm talking like, you know, three, four, five or something like that. And I have never seen it since, but I always remember like loving it as a kid. But I've never, I haven't seen it since I was a kid. Um, and that is The Great Mouse Detective. So, yeah, pretty cool movie um, from what I remember, which is barely at all. But um, pretty cool pretty cool to revisit this one day just to see if it sparks any memories. Um, and then we have um, 101 Dalmatians Patches London Adventure. Okay, so I grabbed this because I'd watched Quella in the theater and... I watched the original 101 Dalmatians, and I really like that. Unfortunately, the uh, the the re the li the first live action movie is not on Blu-ray, um, and I just don't buy a DVD like that anymore. So, um, I I couldn't see that, but <laughs> I I realized there's a sequel, and I think it's like one of those directed video sequels, um, and I was just like kind of curious on it, so I picked this as one of my titles. Um, and then this was another one of like the bonus titles. I don't own, I think like any of the Pixar stuff, but I figured it eventually probably will because I mean, a lot of the Pixar's are like super classic, like Toy Story and stuff like that. But here's one that I didn't really care for, um, when it first came out, but I, I warmed up to it and that is Monsters Inc., which is funny because right, I'm like a horror guy, so I should be into like a monster Disney movie, but, um, yeah, so, um, but yeah, I, I, I I'd be curious to revisit that. And I've never seen the Monsters University or whatever, like the prequel. Um, this one I selfishly got for me. This will end up in my collection probably. <laughs> and that is uh, Holes because I absolutely love it. It's like one of my favorite movies. And I didn't own it in any format. And I haven't watched it in a long time either, but it always will stick out in my memory. I remember when it came out, it was like such a good movie. And then we like read the book and watched the movie in school and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, Holes is pretty damn solid, classic. Um, actually like super smart movie too. Like the way everything connects is like really, really detailed. So really love Holes. Digging up them holes, digging. Um... So after that, we have a Goofy movie. Um, I remember watching this when it came out too, but I don't really remember much about it. So pick that up. So yeah, I mean, went a little bit weirder ones with the Disney Movie Club this time. Um, but yeah, it's uh, I, I like the program. It, it 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 it's a cool way to build a Disney collection without actually feeling like you're spending like a ton of money. Um, anyway, so that is all of those. Now let's move back into the horror, right? Um, so first up here, uh, a couple of these titles I did review during the 31 Days of Horror, so excuse that. Um, I bought a bunch of stuff off of the guys from the Severin table at a convention I went to. I may have actually showed this stuff. I can't remember like what was in my last update because it was so long ago. But if I did, I apologize, but I, I don't think I did. Um, so first up is a wax mask. Um, Dario Argento presents a wax, wax mask. Um, I actually really like this movie. Uh, it was definitely one of the highlights of the 31 Days of Horror this year. I had a lot of fun with it. I think that it is like one of the cooler Italian flicks I've seen in a while. Um, just because like it came out so late and the Italian films were like dried up and dead by then, you know. So it, it's it's cool to see like a solid one. I've heard like nothing but bad things about this film before that, so 
kind of surprised me. Um, another one that I reviewed, V-I-Y, Vi, super kooky, bizarro, um, witch movie. Uh, wh where is this? It, this is Russian. It feels like creepy, weird Japanese. So if you've never seen this, definitely check it out. It is a weird one, man. So I recommend that. So check it out. Uh, then we have, um, which I left in the Blu-ray uh, player, uh, the Night Killer or Night Killer. Um, yeah, this one is another really, really, really bizarre one. Um, you, you just got to see it, Claudio Fergasso. Um, we're actually covering it on this week's 22 shots. So um, actually, by the time you see this, it might even be out on Patreon at least. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's a freaking weird one, guys. <laughs> if you've never seen it, you got to check it out. Um, and then we have When the Wind Blows, which is like uh, part of the Severn Kids line, which was like made as a joke. Um, talked to the Severn guys for quite a while, and, and they were telling me uh, about some of their titles and stuff. But yeah, I, I, it looks like post-apocalyptic. I don't really know, but I, I hear it's a little depressing. Um, Peanut Butter Solution. This one is pretty awesome. It's a fun uh, kids movie, but kind of a you know, weird one. If you've never seen it, check it out. <laughs> it's worth seeing. Um, is there nudity on this? Yeah, there is. All right, so I'm going to show the back of the case. Um, Patrick still lives. Uh, the front of the case has titties on it, so I don't think, I don't think you got, how do I, I, I honestly don't know. I see boobs all the time on YouTube, but, um, I feel like I would probably get in trouble. I don't know, <laughs> but Patrick still lives. Um, the unofficial, like, Italian sequel to the Patrick film, uh, the, to the original Patrick, uh, it's weird, and, <laughs> and it's pretty bad, but, um, I had to pick it up because of how weird it is. Um, and then we have, um, after that, we have Blood on Satan's Claw, which I've never seen, but I hear is really good, so... That's one that the guys at the Severn Table actually recommended to me. So I uh, grabbed that one. After that, we have The Beast in the Cellar, which I believe they gave to me for free. So that was really nice of them. They just tossed it in because I was buying so much stuff. Um, don't really know much about it, but um, yeah, you know, cool movie. Um, after that, we have another weird one here. I reviewed this one as well. And that is the St. Bernard, which was I thought was like an older like killer dog film, but it's not. It's a newer acid trip film. <laughs> it's a weird one. Uh, after that, we have All the Colors of Giallo. I've wanted this forever. Picked it up, watched it. Really not that great. Um, if you've spent any time with Italian films, you pretty much know everything in this. Um, the only thing that I thought was like super interesting was um, hearing Fulci talk about Argento. That was interesting. They had quite the rivalry. Um, okay, so uh, those were the Severn flicks that I picked up. After that, um, this is part of the Vinegar Syndrome package that I got in the mail. Uh, and first up, this movie looks absolutely ridiculous, but it is... Oh, there's boobs on there too. <laughs> What's up with this? Um, I guess I'll show the back. Uh, the Laughing Dead. Um, actually, this this the, without the slip cover, you can get away with it um, because they are covered with the shirt. Um, the Laughing Dead. I uh, don't know the backstory. Wow, this looks ridiculous. This looks crazy. Um, I this might have been the film that um, <laughs> that. Uh, Joe uh, from Vinegar Syndrome was talking about on Colors of the Pod or whatever, the Elric Kane and Rebecca McKendry podcast. Um, this one looks ridiculous. But yeah, gotta love those Vin Sins, man. I'm always excited with uh, what they put out. After that, we have um, this is like a double feature. It's uh, Nothing Underneath and Too Beautiful to Die. So yeah, not really sure about these ones, but you know. Came, I, I mean, I bought this package for a specific film, <laughs> and uh, these were all kind of bonuses. 
Um, this one, um, this is one of those VSAs, which I don't own any of them, so I was, I was weird, I, I was like kind of confused, I, I didn't think they put these in the packages, but apparently they do. I don't get all the packages, but I get, like, the ones that I'm really interested in. And that is The Grave, so yeah, um, pretty, pretty interesting slip cover here, it's like a slip box that comes out underneath. Uh, and then, the last for the Blu-rays from Vincent. Um, or at least from the package, we have, and I, I just love their box sets, I really do. We have Camille Keaton in Italy, which has a beautiful box here with Camille Keaton on the cover. I was actually supposed to meet Camille Keaton this past uh, summer, and she ended up having to cancel. I hope she's doing okay. Um, but Camille Keaton in Italy, um, there are three films in this box set, uh, one of which I have seen and I actually think is a pretty good movie. Um, and I just love the colors on the sides there. That's just so cool. Um, we have Madeline, which I've never seen. Sex... I don't even know. There's like kind of boobs on there. <laughs> Sex of the Witch, which I've never seen. Um, and then the one that I have seen is actually a really interesting movie, and that's Tragic Ceremony. We did this... Uh, this was a um, Ricardo Freda film that we covered, um, I believe, last year in Italian Horror Month. Um, and then a couple of other directors that I'm not familiar with on the other two. Um, but yeah, uh, Camille Keaton in Italy. Such a weird box set. Like, you know what I mean? Um, it's, it, I, I like their weird box sets. Like, they did the um, Homegrown Horrors, which I believe they're going to do another one uh, that's, like, more specific. <laughs> even more specific. I know they had, like the trilogy of, um, like, Wisconsin horror movies before with um, Blood Bee and Blood Harvest or the Wisconsin Blood Trilogy or so I don't remember what it was, but, yeah, that was weird. Um, okay, so let's see here. Got some more Blu-rays. That was the Vincennes stuff. Always love the Vincennes stuff. Um, I picked up a couple of Christmas films that I didn't have, so... <laughs> Some people are going to look at me like I'm crazy, but I did pick up Black Christmas, the 2018-2019 uh, reboot there. I know, I know. I, listen, I tore this film apart. There's a review on my channel I did with Fresh Cuts. Like, I went off on this movie. I am also open-minded enough to give it a second shot. Maybe that was a knee-jerk reaction, but I doubt it. Um... But at the end of the day, I own the other Black Christmas films, and I'm kind of a completist, and this was like nine bucks, so I decided to grab it, and if I will say anything, it does have some good Christmas atmosphere, so I'm not sure if I'll get it to it this Christmas, but I have been feeling like so in the Christmas mood lately, and it's uh, still like mid-November, that I just really want to watch Christmas movies, so that's why that's there. Um, after that, we have The Children, which um, I actually, there's two versions of this Blu-ray. I think this is the Canadian release because the other one's like the Ghost House or whatever. That kind of bothers me that it's not the Ghost House version, but whatever. Um, yeah, but this is a pretty, pretty good Christmas horror film, killer kid film. I like this one a lot. We covered this last year on our annual Christmas show for 22 Shots, so... Had to pick it up because I, I didn't... I, I did like it and I didn't own it from last year, so... Um, decided to grab that. Oh, and I will be covering that on a episode of Cut to the Chase soon, so needed it for that reason, too. Um, after that, we have... Speaking of Rebecca McKendry, um, this is All the Creatures Were Stirring, uh, which, uh, honestly, the cover is way cooler than the movie. Not to be a hater, but I just thought it was okay. Um, the one segment where they're in the parking lot was cool, but the rest were forgettable. But I'm willing to give it another shot, you know. Um, and it's a Christmas Christmas horror film. I, I, I just love them. They're so awesome. Um, and then we have one that I wanted in my collection for so long, and it just was always so expensive. And I finally, I was looking at, like, some other Christmas films that went out of print that I didn't own, like... Um, don't open till Christmas, which was a DVD only, and I sat on it and sat on it and sat on it, and eventually it went out of print. So I was thinking about like this film because it never went down in price. Like I never saw this thing go down in price. And I'm like, eventually it's gonna go out of print. I'm gonna miss it. 
and I really like it. So um, I just finally decided to get it. I did get it for a little bit of a discount. There was like a 10% off sale going on on deep discount. So I got it a little cheaper than it normally is listed at. But that is Rare Exports, A Christmas Tale, uh, which is a great little fantasy horror type movie. Um, we reviewed this on 22 Shots a while back too. But yeah, really unique little take on uh, the Christmas lore. So that is... Uh, Rare Exports, A Christmas Tale. I wanted that forever and finally got it, so I'm happy about that. Um, another Christmas film that I've never seen, I, I don't know how much it actually has to do with Christmas, um, but that is a Synapse release here of The Dorm That Dripped Blood. And this is one that I just honestly never seen, never really heard too many people talk about. I know it's like been discussed, but I don't really know what it's about besides like, you know, dorm on Christmas slasher film. So, uh, yeah, picked that up as well. So, picked up a you know handful of Christmas titles just to sort of get me started in the Christmas season. Um, so, yeah, next up here, this one, uh, I'm actually glad we pulled 94 um, on 22 Shots because this will give me an excuse to watch this. Um, that is, <clears throat> excuse me, I know this is going to be wrong, but Mahaka, Kal, Mahaka. Um, which is essentially a Bollywood or Indian uh, take on A Nightmare on Elm Street. And <laughs> that's something else, man. That I hear it's pretty long. I feel like it's like two hours long. Um, and it is one of those um, like rip-off movies, but sort of like a reboot at the same time. Like I hear that it takes elements from Elm Street 1, 2, and 4, or like 1, 1, 1 and 3, or like 1 and 4 or something. I don't know, but um, I'm definitely very curious to check this out. This is uh, released by Massacre Video, which I, I think this is like the only Massacre Video title I have. Um, but yeah, I, I had to pick it up because originally um, Mondo released a DVD of this and it went heavily out of print. So I was surprised to actually see this get a Blu-ray. It's so weird. But, you know, Indian Freddy, I am down. Uh, after that, um, we have the Friday the 13th 8 movie collection. Now, I already own all these a bunch of times, but look at this cool red case. I mean, this is, like, I own the box set, right? The Scream Factory box set. But if I'm on the go, if I'm going to a hotel, if I'm going on a trip, just so happens to be Friday the 13th, instead of lugging that big box set around, I just grab this off the shelf, tuck it in my bag, off we go, Friday the 13th all week. And uh, yeah, that's uh, part one through eight, the uh, Paramount uh, cycle of films. And boy, do I love the Friday the 13th movies. I just do. And this is, a, this is a really cool case. So that's why I have it. Uh, after that, we have a four film shark collection. Uh, there was a DVD version of um, like eight shark films or something and it had some of these it had all four of these actually but it was DVD only there was also a blu-ray version of that eight film one but it's I, I only see I've only seen like two people have it it just like seemed like a really limited thing uh, but this one here has shark attack shark attack 2 shark attack 3 and shark zone so, uh, basically, now when I go to watch the Shark Attack films for the first time in, like, 25 years, I'll have them on Blu-ray instead of DVD. Uh, then we have, I might have showed this before, but I couldn't remember, that is Taste the Blood of Dracula. Picked that up for 1970, which is a um, Hammer Dracula film. Pretty good movie. Made my top ten list. All right, this one is a very special one to me. Uh, this movie did make my top 10 of 1972, I believe. And I saw this at the drive-in a while back, um, this particular transfer, and was stunned because this movie has always looked horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. I have the old Cheesy Flicks DVD, if you guys remember Cheesy Flicks. Uh, but that film is The Legend of Boggy Creek. Now, this thing... Uh, originally got announced to be um, a 4K transfer, and, and it is a 4K transfer, but it, they only released a Blu-ray. I thought when they announced this that it was going to be a 4K, but the daughter, I believe, released this film, um, Charles B. Pierce's daughter, and it was like exclusive to their website, and it was really expensive, and it saddened me because I really wanted a copy of this because 
the very first time I seen Legend of Boggy Creek, I thought it was just okay. Um, probably because I couldn't see much because it's, it's so dark. Um, and then I saw it again and again, and I really started to like it the more that I saw it. It's creepy, it's cool, it's unique. I just like the way that it is, is told, the story's told, it's scary. Um, then when I saw this at the drive-in with a actual clear transfer, I fell in love with this movie. So, um, I ended up seeing a copy of this at a drive-in that, it, it, um, they were selling stuff and like the, the people that set up there, I think they're called creepy classics. Like everything there is like $10 above like market price, usually like five or $10 above market price. Except this. This was like $10 under. And I was like, I, can, I have to buy it. So I ended up picking it up. And I, I couldn't be more happy that I actually got it. Because I thought that I was going to miss out on that. Because it was too expensive. Um, one that I picked up because we reviewed it um, on two shows ago, I believe. And that is The Hand That Feeds the Dead. This is a Sergio Garoni film. He was the um, second featured director in our Italian Horror Month this year. Um, Full Moon put this out. It's not good. <laughs> it's not a good movie. Not a good movie at all. Um, let me make some more room here for some stuff. Alright, next up here. I uh, picked up a couple of 1994 films because that's the year we picked on 22 Shots. And first up here we have Brain Scan. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen this film. It stars Edward Furlong. I hear it's really fun, so I'm looking forward to checking that one out. Uh, then we have one called Interview with the Vampire. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Interview with the Vampire. Um, this one is a movie that I actually really like. I remember watching this when it came out on VHS, um, like when it was a new release. Uh, so that had to be like 94 or 5 um, with my aunt and liking it ever since but i didn't really get it when i was that young i just remember the cro like them feeding the body to the crocodiles and that just stuck in my memory um but i watched it recently for the first time in such a long time and it, it is a great movie like it i know it gets a lot of like critical praise and stuff like that but it deserves it it really is a very very good movie um so i'm looking forward to revisiting that one uh, and then we have H.P. Lovecraft's Lurking Fear. Never seen this movie. For some reason, I always thought this was like an alternate title to Castle Freak. Um, I guess because of the castle at the back <laughs> and the weird looking creature that kind of looks like Castle Freak. Um, but yeah, uh, i never seen it. So uh, curious on that one. And then we have uh, The Crow, which I didn't own in any format. Actually, I did own it. One time I had a PSP when I was, I got it for my birthday, like seventh grade or something. And, uh, it came with a few movies and the crow was one of them. Um, but yeah, I don't have that anymore. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, I've never, I don't know. I like the crow, but I, I, I watched it. I started watching it the other night. I never finished it. Um, and I was like, I'm not sure if I like this as much as I did. Um, before and next up here we have uh, I actually thought this was 